Now this is a video I've wanted to film for a while. This is a huge trap I've seen a lot of music producers fall under, and I like to call it the producer's bubble. And that is, you like to think that everybody understands music production, and even more so, understands the technicalities of music production. A great example of this is I remember I was talking to one of my friends about electronic music, and I said, oh yeah, you know, I think the, the average person would understand the difference if I showed him two songs between dubstep and trance. And my friend was like, I don't think so. I'm like, what do you mean? It's super obvious. I showed him two different songs and he's like, oh yeah, I mean, I guess I can tell the difference. And that blew my mind. And the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, you know what though? It makes sense. To anyone into EDM, that seems almost super trivial. Like, oh, of course, there's a huge difference between dubstep or bass music and let's like, say house, techno, trance, etc. Huge difference between those genres. However, to the average person, it all sounds the same. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is remember, 99.99% of people are not really gonna think about your mix down, how good your mastering is, how good your sound design is. They're just gonna go off of, how does a song make me feel? And I remember the first time I encountered this, and this is a big piece of advice I give to a lot of music producers, the best advice and the best feedback about your music you're gonna get is gonna be from people who don't produce. And I remember in the first couple of years I started producing, one of my good girlfriends I was talking to her and she goes, Mark, I've been listening to your music, you know, and she's a huge fan of EDM, by the way. Not a, a music producer, but she's a huge fan of electronic music. She goes, I gotta be honest, your songs, if you wanna be blunt, your songs don't have a drop. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, what are you talking about? And from my angle, I came at it from a technical standpoint. I'm like, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about because on my drop, my kick drum, uh, my kick drum is louder. I make sure to do that kind of mastering technique where the verses are about like a decibel or two decibels lower than the drop, then you know goes up a couple decibels. I use a washout, for example, on my build. I have this and this, and I basically came at it from a technical standpoint. And she has a very raw type of uh, demeanor, so she's like, Mark. I gotta be honest, I don't know what the F any of that means. All I'm saying is your songs don't have a drop. They don't hit hard. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me take a step back and look at my songs through that lens. And I realized that when I was making my songs, I was going at it from a very technical standpoint where I was like, okay, the bass is hitting here. The sound design is excellent. This and this is excellent. But to an average listener, she was right. She's right that the, the songs weren't dropping as hard, that the impact the song had just really wasn't there. This is something I actually learned from Skrillex. I met him years ago in 2014 at a Vegas nightclub, got to talk to him, super nice guy, by the way. And I asked him, kind of paraphrasing my question, I'm like, hey man, I just gotta know, like, how do you get your songs to be that big. Like, if you don't mind me asking, like, what did you do to get to where you are? And he said, one, he's like, I just made songs I thought other DJs would wanna play. I thought that was a very interesting perspective that, huh, what if I make music not just for people to listen to, but the other DJs to play? Because if other DJs play it, that's in a sense like free promotion and your songs get bigger and bigger. The second thing he said, he said, look, I made sure, <clears throat> that I made sure that every song I released had high energy behind it, that it hit hard, that it had that hard hitting feel and the energy was there. And that is something that's really always stuck with me. And then I realized that any single time I'm making music, and this is again, I think something we all fall into, I like to think, okay, make sure I have enough dynamic range. Make sure I have enough, uh, make sure my mix sound is good enough. Make sure my snare punches through the mix at the accurate level. Make sure my mastering is clean or do I want to master it a bit loud. All these technicalities of music production but a big thing I typically do now is I take a step back and say, okay, do I like the song? Is this a good song? Ignoring all the technicalities of production, is, just a, is, is it a good, fun, energetic, upbeat song? Does it just from a pure vibe and energy standpoint, does it hit or does it not? This is another thing I talked about when it comes to using splice samples. I released a video a few days ago-ish talking about this, that again, when it comes to the producer's bubble, we like to think, oh, you know what? If I use this sound from Cashmere's pack, they're gonna know it's definitely volume three from Cashmere and this one sample. If I use this one vocal sample, every producer is gonna call me out. If I use that one 
bamboo snare or whatever, everybody's going to know and they know I took it directly from this one spice pack. The truth is, one, most people don't know nor do they probably care. Most people, if you think about it, don't even know what a sample pack is. They don't even know what Splice Sounds is. But two, it's like, well, and this is my perspective. One, I guess doing sub point on two is if you know about that sample, that means you also listen to it. But also it's like, well, even if a producer does know about that sample and they call you out for it, it's like, well, that's the point of samples. Is, that's the point of taking a sample and using it, right? I think Diplo made a really funny video about this when he released one of his samples pack, one of his sample uh, packs saying, look, it doesn't matter about how you created the sample. It all matters about how you use it, right? Using samples, taking them and using them in a very unique way. And that's the thing with Splice. This is another aspect of the producer's kind of fallacy in this producer's bubble. And overall, I really want to bring this up because again, I think for a lot of producers, when you start making music, the more you get into the technicalities, the more you start to look at it from a producer's standpoint. And remember, when it comes to people listening to your music, like I said before, like 0.0001% are actually gonna understand music production enough to be like, eh, this mix down could have been better. This snare could have been better. This could have been better. But overall, at the end of the day, remember for most people listening to your music, they're just going off the vibe and energy. I'm not saying to obviously produce your songs in a bad way. Of course, I'm not saying that, but this is something just to be aware of overall, because I think not so you have to pander to the mainstream, but you have to put two different lens caps on. I think there's a couple artists that are really good at this. I think Skrillex is the prime example of this, that from a producer standpoint, you know, he's releasing his new album, actually tomorrow at the time of this video, releasing his new album tomorrow, technically today, because I'm filming this video a day in advance. But uh, when he releases that album, I mean, every producer has been going crazy about his new album, Quest for Fire, at least at the time of this video. The production, next level. However, I know a lot of people who don't produce, who have heard his new songs being like, oh my God, I love this song. This is really cool. It's catchy. I like the, the vibe of it. I think the song's really upbeat. It's fun. And these are different words that a lot of people have used for it to just express how the song makes them feel. And that's why I suggest to a lot of producers when you're producing a lot, working on all these technicalities of music production, when it comes to just everything we know about production, try to take a step back, whether you're in that kind of final stage of the process and to say, okay, just how does it make me feel? If I was listening to this and I didn't understand anything, and I think more importantly, if I didn't care about any of these technical elements, how would the song make me feel? Oh.